Hey man, I'm out here trying to do some work on my car, man. And then I'm watching your videos, giving me a shout out, man. I appreciate it. But you know what I told you, man. You can't release the videos when I'm out in the garage working, man. I don't get any work done watching the videos. I appreciate the shout out, though, man. <laughs> Back out in the garage, I have all the suspension. Well, the rear control arms put in. The shocks are just bolted on from the bottom. I just ran to the store, got the new bolts for the top shocks, or for the to mount the shocks up top. But today it's gonna be pretty easy. Just uh, get the shocks in. Probably uh, throw the springs in. But in order to Set it down to start on the front of the car. We'll be taking the rear tires off the Elko and toss them on the Monic for now. Once I get those off, I'll probably take these front ones off the Monty, throw them on the rear of the Elko. But um, I know once uh, these wheels are on the Monty, I'll be able to set it down and then I'll double check see how much room I have in there for the back spacing so the wheels I'm looking at these are uh, I believe these are 17 by 8 I think the ones I'm looking at are 20 by 8 and a half with the 5 inch back spacing these are 4 and a half so I know if there's plenty of room left on these when I throw them on the money I know I might be able to go with the 20s, but we'll have to throw those on, do a little bit of measuring. Because with the measured, uh, without any weight on it, I'm getting um, about five and a half inches of back spacing between the hub and the frame. So, like I said, I want to put it under, uh, I'll put some weight on there. And then measure it just so I know when the suspension is under load that it doesn't change anything. So I think I might be able to get away with the 20s. I'm just gonna double check. So in order to that to do that, put the wheels from the Elko on here because the steel wheels won't clear the calipers. So yeah, put the camera down and start getting busy. Note to self, if you're gonna run locks on your wheels, remember where you put the key. Might take me a while to find it, so get back to looking. Alright, so for some reason, the thread pitch from the Elko is different from the GN rear end. Um, Luckily, I do have a couple extra lug nuts from the tires that came on there. Can't find the driver's side ones though, but I have a couple. And then I had an extra from the Blazer. Those fit also, so they'll fit in the in the holes there, so they won't scratch them up, which is good. So I'll just throw probably four on this side, four on the other side. If I can find a couple more. I know I have them laying around somewhere, but just one thing to look out for. I was about to run it down with the impact and jack them all up, but decided to try the old lug nuts because I was worried it wouldn't fit through there. But yeah, so that's what we'll do. Take two. All right, so there we have it. It's sitting on the Elko wheels for now. I just checked uh, the back spacing and I still have about an inch and a half behind on each side so I uh, could go with the the 20s I was looking at so with the five inch back spacing there's plenty of room and I think I think I need to go a little bit bigger than uh, definitely 17s but um I might go a little bit bigger than 18 so I think the 20s will fit real nice Maybe if I feel like it, maybe some 22s, 
but you gotta really take some measurements. So, I don't know. But this thing is sitting low. I know it's been up on the uh, jack stands for a while, but even when it was in the garage, I felt like it was a little bit higher. Now it's, it's gonna be pretty low. That 200 drop is gonna make a difference. Of course, not gonna really see it until everything's on, but I know it's already sitting lower. I really can't base on anything, can't take measurements because the suspension I had on it before was all worn out. So, probably just have to find one this summer. That's stock height. I'm gonna get this one out. So, the front's definitely gonna sit up higher because there's no engine or anything in it. Once I do, swap everything out. Even without the motor and everything, it should sit a little lower than it is now. But, I'm gonna, what's next? Yeah, just get these tires off the front and throw them on the rear, just so the Elko's back on all four, not on jack stands. But, it's tempting, man, just to do something else back there. It's nothing fancy. Grab a light. Nothing real fancy on the Elko. Just shots the springs. I think one inch lowering springs. But other than that, this all stock rear end. Might need a fresh coat, but for the most part, it's kind of similar. But I definitely use a different product. You can see that's starting to. Show a little bit of dirt. I don't think that's rust coming through, so should be good. But yeah, let me uh tack the front up, get it on jack stands, and get these tires moved over. Alright, so got the tire switched over. Uh it still looks like it's sitting lower for now. I'll let all this stuff settle in, get some weight in the car. But it's gonna start pulling apart the whole front end. So it's all just bolt off stuff. You just gotta be careful when you do the lower control arms uh, with the springs in there. It might shoot out. So just make sure make sure you support those. Other than that, everything like I said, just bolt on, bolt off. Take all the steering linkages out. I'll leave this on there. So, leave all that. Just try to paint around it. Well, you know what? So, I'm at it. Three more bolts. Might take it all off. So, yeah. Take all that off. You gotta love this. No castle nut on there. Just a cotter pin. Safe. Yeah. Just gonna start uh, tearing it apart. So we have it. Front ends all stripped down. Removing uh these front springs. Or any springs always a little risky. Um way I did it, it's probably not recommended, but it worked for me. Just removing the whole our bulb control arms and the spindle all in one piece with the rotors and everything attached. So that's all out. You have to cut some bolts, but I knew I wasn't reusing any of this stuff, so next up just clean up the whole front end, paint it while the steering rack is out. Still still debating if I want to just use the non power steering that came on it or switch it over to power steering. Keep hearing uh 
both goods and bads about it. So we'll see. But front end is out. I think uh, might be enough work for today. Clean everything up. I'll make sure to keep some of the bolts and the body shims that came off of it. Even though I'll probably just end up getting all new ones. But yeah, that's it for the day. Oh, these shocks. I don't know how it came out. Oh, the shocks. Well, they're old. But it just pretty much ripped right out. And the smell of hydraulic fluid is horrible. But that's it for today. Tomorrow might be ni nice enough. This shouldn't take any time cleaning up and priming and painting. So, I don't know, still early enough, still nice enough out. So, I might hit it with some sandpaper and put the rust reformer on there. Should take 20, 30 minutes to do. But if I do it, I'll uh, make sure to record it. If not, I'll be it for the day and I'll pick up tomorrow and try to do it all. Because once this is done, the front suspension will go on. And then I'll probably get around to ordering some wheels for it. Because well, they're dirty. But I need to go back on the L cup. It's not a bad look, but it's not what I'm going for. Those are the L cup wheels, not the money. So, yeah, that's it for today. So I had to slow over the back end, swap the wheels, measure some back spacing, and got the whole front end tore apart. Let me compare the springs real fast. Uh, so, two inch drop springs. Goes a little sacrifice to the car guides. But, uh, so, those are the difference between the springs. You can see the height. So, these should be no problem with putting back in. Looks like about two coils of a difference. I don't know the spring rates offhand. I'd probably look them up on this one, those ones. I'd have no idea, but I'm stop talking and call it a day. So before the front suspension goes on, I did finish painting the frame. Use the same steps. I uh, sanded it down, a little bit of wire wheel, then wiped that down. Um, rust, re rust reformer, then primer, and then the epoxy. So I think it came out pretty nice. I probably could have brushed the top on, but I just sprayed everything. Uh, stuff to do like the core support, the bumper reinforcements, and then just uh, random parts. Try to clean those up and pop those also. But it's been almost a day drying, so I'll let it sit for a little bit longer, and then I'll go with the uh, or then I'll start to install the front suspension. But yeah, it's looking good. I think I will switch over to uh, power steering. I've been reading up, and I think I can use the Jeep power steering on there. So I think uh, around a 94 Cherokee, you can swap the power steering uh, box out with, along with the steering shaft. So might do all that also might look into get a new uh linkages for the steering so that's possible too so no all those bushings would need to be replaced so why not just go all brand new because like that that's <laughs> nothing's left but yeah it's just a little little quick update before i start really Diving into the suspension. Just looks so clean. 
Yeah. The radiator, of course, port that'll be painted, along with everything else. All the metal parts will be painted. And after the suspension, I'd want to paint the firewall. I think I'm going to color match it, so I'll paint the firewall and try to do all the jams first and then worry about priming and fixing body work. So that's it.